<laughs> Bent Usman, a Facebook VIP member. Got a bar for five years. It's been two years now and I'm now married to a U.S. citizen. When I was told I could get a waiver, my lawyer told me to submit a FOIA request because I didn't receive some uh, form that tells me why I'm being barred and having my visa taken away. I submitted the FOIA to the Department of Homeland Security. They told me the info... Uh, they told me the info I seek falls under USCIS, submitted a FOIA to Custom and Border Protection and USCIS, uh, to which they both say they're not seeking any records for, of my removal for deportation from the U.S. Now, what could be the issue? How can I get these filed? Because I was stopped and questioned at the airport on my third visit to which they resorted to take my visa. Well, it sounds like one of two things either number one you have a summary inadmissibility and that's usually for some sort of fraud or criminal records so if you don't have a criminal record then they're going to say fraud either you were coming to work on a visa you weren't entitled to work on or something else so you have to figure out what the underlying reason for them taking away the visa is there was some reason why they didn't want you to come into the u.s it wasn't just because you smiled incorrectly at them so we got to figure out the underlying reason that underlying reason is a separate bar to admission along with the five-year bar for summary inadmissibility. So ultimately, when people get have this summary inadmissibility at the airport, you're ending up looking at two waivers, one for the deportation at the airport and the other one for the reason why you were deported, whether it was you know criminal records or uh, misrepresentation or whatever it may be. Customs and Border Patrol has these records. Why they don't have it, according to you, I have no idea. Maybe you're doing it wrong. Um, I think if your lawyer says you should get these records, you're with the wrong lawyer. Go to a lawyer, they will get the records for you. All right, we have Abraham, a Facebook VIP member in Eastvale, California. Uh, I got my uh, green card for two years. I sent a form of uh, for a change of address and got a confirmation number for AR-11. Now, is there any other form I need to fill in uh, for the change of address or another department that I have to send one to? Because I got another request in an email uh, this time as well asking for the change of address. No. That's it. AR-11, you're done. Unless you want to change your driver's license. Okay. And uh, Lisa Lee Freighter, a VIP Facebook uh, member. My husband wants to file for my kids, which are his stepkids, but my daughter's biological dad's name is not on her birth paper. Will it be a problem or do I have to get it on uh, before filing? No, because the stepdad's filing, so it has nothing to do with the biological dad. What it has to do with is, are you the biological mom? Is your name on the birth certificate? And were you married to the stepfather who's petitioning before the child's 18th birthday? Okay, Jennifer Evans on Facebook. I'm waiting on my 10-year green card. I've been married for four years. When can I file for citizenship? Um, when did you get your green card? We don't have that answer. So waiting on the 10-year green card. We don't know when she got her green card. It's three, if you're in a, in a bona fide marriage with your spouse and you're waiting on the 10-year card and you already have the two-year card, if you've been waiting on the 10-year card and you have now conditional resident status is more than three years has gone, you can file for your citizenship now. Okay, uh, Khalif Muhammad on Facebook. What happens if your parents were illegally deported for over 20 years ago? Why were they illegally deported? Daryl Winnebaugh on YouTube. A friend has a pending COS to, uh, to F1 yet to be approved, but got married to a green card holder who is applying for her citizenship in March. Can she add him to his tax filing, joint filing? She can add him and file jointly for sure, but if he's working without authorization, which probably he doesn't have because he's changing from B2 to F1, then he's violated his status and then you would have to wait on the wife to become a citizen before you file the adjustment. If he's approved for the change of F1, after he's approved for the change of F1, if the wife's not a citizen yet and he hasn't violated his status in any way, she can do the adjustment right away. 
All right. Claudette Fisher on Facebook. What can be done for LPR filing for spouses abroad who have been waiting for a consular interview date since 2020? You just got it. You got to annoy the hell out of the embassy. Squeaky wheel gets the oil. Mm -hmm. CE user on YouTube. Can a work-based green card applicant adjust their status while in the USA while their dependents abroad, spouses, children, process their pa papers abroad consular? Um, the, the, the answer is yes, but you have to adjust your status first and then everything gets transferred abroad for your children to follow joint. Okay, Sunita Singh on YouTube. I applied for a U visa in 2018. Any update on what year I'm getting my U visa? 2026. Okay, last one. Dwayne Gordon on YouTube. Please expand on the I-601 waiver and what happens if the person goes overseas and the immigrant visa is denied at the embassy? You're talking about an I-601A, which would be the provisional waiver. That is a waiver to overcome the three and 10 year bars for unlawful presence. So if you're not eligible to adjust your status here and you get an immigrant visa appointment in another country and you leave the United States without this waiver and you've been undocumented for 180 days, you would have a three year bar. And if you've been undocumented for a year, you would have a 10 year bar. So you don't want to go home and be stuck for three or 10 years. That would stink. So you do this waiver before you leave. It's all done while you're physically present in the United States. It's based on extreme and unusual hardship to your lawful resident spouse or U.S. citizen spouse or your lawful permanent resident mother or father or U.S. citizen mother or father. It's not based on hardship to your children, unfortunately. So you file, you, got, you get the visa petition approved. You start processing at the National Visa Center. You, if you're not eligible to adjust your status here to avoid the 10 year bar when you go home, you then file an I-601A provisional waiver, again, based on extreme and unusual hardship to spouse or parent, you get it approved. Now you're free to go home and they cannot prevent you from returning because you overstayed on your visa, which is why most people get stuck. Thanks for watching. For more Bradshaw Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.